Hello, my name is Bob Miller, and I'm lead pastor here at Plymouth First Church. And let me extend my welcome to this online worship service. I come to you from inside my home, sheltering in place, as I'm sure you are as well. These are no doubt difficult times. Every one of us has had our life in some way turned upside down. So may God bless you with strength, patience, assurance, and confidence that we are going to get through this with God's presence, God's strength, and God's power. You know, this particular Sunday is traditionally considered Palm Passion Sunday. It ushers in Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter. And it involves what is known as Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. So significant an event that it is covered in all four gospel accounts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew puts it this way. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees, spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this? They asked. The crowds answered, It's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. You know, many churches traditionally hand out palm leaves as you enter for worship on this Sunday. And then sometime during the service, everyone waves their palm leaves and shouts, Hosanna! A biblical word used to express adoration or, or praise or joy. There's a big buildup of energy. We get all jazzed up in our remembrance of the crowds lining that pathway into Jerusalem. But this year, there are no palm branches or leaves being handed out. Basically, because we are not physically in our respective church buildings. In fact, we haven't been for most of Lent. This has not been the Lent that any of us have planned. This year's Lent has been thrown into a tizzy. This past week, I heard said that this has been the Lent of all Lents, and all because of a germ, a pathogen, a disease. I pulled out my Cambridge English Dictionary and looked up the definition of disease. And disease is defined as a condition of a person, animal, or plant in which its body or structure is harmed because an organ or part is unable to work as it usually does. Now, Lent is not a person or animal or plant, but its structure has definitely been affected such that it has not been able to work as it usually does. This coronavirus has certainly had some far-reaching impact as a disease on our world. You know what we need is for some hero to come in and, and clean this virus thing up, get rid of the pathogen that's harming us, that's causing us to not function right. Put an end to that thing that's causing us to not function as we usually do. Not at all unlike how the pulp culture character of Superman always came in to clean up and put an end to the dysfunction that found its way into the fictional city of Metropolis. Yep, that's what we need. We need a hero like Superman. Anyway, getting back to Palm Sunday, which actually, as I mentioned earlier, is often considered Palm Passion Sunday because it is on the cusp, the transition between Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the grueling events that took place in Jerusalem that week, ending with his crucifixion and death on a cross. That's what the passion of Jesus is. 
It's that string of events beginning with his arrest and ending with his death. Talk about things not working the way that they're supposed to. The week begins with Jesus being on a roll as illustrated by the supporting crowds lining the streets as he, as he enters the city, only to have the plot to kill him take tangible form, including one of his close disciples actively betraying him into the hands of those who want to kill him. Then there's that corrupt and, and mock trial leading to Jesus being sentenced to death by crucifixion. What in the world happened that could make it go from the palm thing to the passion thing? There was definitely a pathogen at work there, something that brought harm to the way it is supposed to be, something that brought disease to the system, to the functioning of those people involved. And that pathogen is called sin. The sin of all of humanity brought to focus in one of the most heinous events of human history, the willful slaughter of the most sinless person who ever lived. One minute life, the next minute death. Sure seems like we could have used that hero then to come and turn things around, to make things right to come and clean things up. Because what happened when Jesus died is that all those who followed Jesus, all those who were counting on Jesus to clean up the world as they had been told the Messiah would do, well, their hopes were crushed. Their savior was now dead. The, the one they looked to to be their hero, the one who they believed was going to save them was now gone. It wasn't supposed to be that way. The Messiah they expected can't be killed, can't die. Can you imagine how devastating that must have been for those disciples of Jesus? All their hopes, all their dreams, everything they believed dashed in one afternoon? A little sidebar. Did you know that there was a time when Superman was killed? And here I'm talking about the DC Comics Superman. In 1992, the writers and publishers of DC Comics, of which Superman was a beloved hero, a beloved icon, they decided to kill Superman in a battle to the death with the monster Doomsday. And we, and we all know that Superman's not real, right? I mean, he's a fictional character but he's not supposed to die. How can he die? He's the hero we count on to, to always save us, no matter the threat. I mean, stop and think. Who's going to save Metropolis? Who's going to save the world? Of course, I know Superman and the city of Metropolis aren't real, but I can really empathize with what those fictional people of Metropolis must have felt. Their hero, their savior, dead. I can really imagine that sense of hopelessness, that feeling of dread. I expect not unlike how the disciples of Jesus must have felt upon Jesus's death on that cross. But you see, we know something now that those disciples did not know at that time of Jesus' death. And you know where I'm going with this. We know that Jesus was coming back. We know that in three days, Jesus would be resurrected into new life. Of course, they, they should have known that too. Jesus only told them multiple times. For example, Mark chapter 8 tells us, He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and that after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And still, 
they didn't get it. But you see, that rising again after three days thing, i.e. the resurrection, well that makes all the difference. Jesus' resurrection is the promise of new life made good, as well as the victory over death that that resurrection represented. And all that that means relative to overcoming evil and the effects of sin. That's what Easter is all about. And that's why it's so central to the Christian faith. Life, death, then resurrection or new life. By the way, the comics writers did eventually resurrect Superman back into publication. Turns out he came back looking a little different, but everyone knew he was the same Superman. And there was great relief by both the people of Metropolis and the readers of comics. Now, I know it almost sounds like I'm preaching an Easter sermon with all this emphasis on resurrection. But my emphasis on the resurrection today is really about hope and assurance. Hope that new life awaits us on the other side and assurance that everything Jesus was about then applies just as much to us today. You see, here's one of the things about Jesus. The good news of Jesus Christ is definitely about eternal or everlasting life, but it is also about experiencing slices of that life today. And I say that because Jesus was about healing and bringing about wholeness in the here and now. For sure he spoke of eternal life in heaven and he called for people to order their lives accordingly in anticipation of such life. But all his miracles, all his exorcisms, all his acts of healing all took place in the present as if to give tangible proof, to provide a foretaste of what that was all heading to. In many ways, it was the pattern of life, death, then resurrection, but in the here and now. I, I mean, it was the there and then for those who experienced Jesus some 2,000 years ago. But it is the here and now for us who experience Jesus today. I mentioned earlier how this being Palm Passion Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week, a week in which we particularly remember Christ's passion and all that entails, including his death. And if that's where it were to end, that is, if Jesus was crucified, died, and that was the end of it, well then, all that passion stuff would make no sense. But it doesn't end there. It continues. A new chapter begins, and that comes about because of the resurrection. The resurrection is what makes the passion, Christ's passion, make sense. Resurrection does follow. And that's what provides the substance of hope and assurance that there is new life on the other side. You see, my friends, a real hero has been at work for us. Which brings us to this Lent of all Lents that we are presently going through. We can count on new life after these difficult days we are presently living through are behind us. Today is Palm Passion Sunday, and next week is Easter. And we will prepare this week for resurrection by exploring what death meant for Jesus, but even more what his death means for us. 
and we will come back next Sunday and celebrate the resurrection of Christ and all that was won for us in that most death-defying act. But as well, we will also come back and celebrate resurrection from the particulars of this particular Lenten season. It won't be next week, but it will come. Resurrection from the throes of this coronavirus is as sure as Christ's resurrection is sure. For you see, it is ultimately our faith in the resurrection, our belief in new life made possible through Jesus Christ that is the very foundation of our Christian faith. One of the songs in today's playlist is entitled, In Christ Alone. And it begins with these words. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. And it finishes with, here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. My friends, would you pray with me? Oh God, God who is the source of abundant life, we humbly ask to be strengthened in knowledge and assurance of the resurrection. As we prepare for Easter, we desire for our hearts and minds to be open to the meaning of this, of this holy week. We enter this week knowing both how this week started for Jesus and how it ended. And in so doing, we understand even deeper our need for a hero to save us. Our need for a savior. In this Lent of all Lents, as we combat this coronavirus, many of us feel so overwhelmed, in some cases helpless, as we do our best to be a positive force in this fight, grant us patience and wisdom that we may not spread nor catch this disease. And for those that have contracted the illness, give them your care. For those on the front lines fighting on our behalf, your protection. Those who are experiencing hardship financially, emotionally, spiritually, Give them your peace and those who have experienced any kind of loss, your comfort. But also for those who are experiencing afflictions and illness or misfortunes beyond COVID-19, we ask for your mercies upon them too. Help us to remember that we are not alone. Help us to always be centered on you for you are our faith our path, our hope, our life. When his disciples asked Jesus how to pray, he taught them these words. And so let us all join together in praying the Lord's Prayer aloud, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, my friends, let us continue our preparations this coming week that we may come back together next week strengthened in the knowledge and sureness of Christ's resurrection promised and delivered as a foretaste of the resurrection we will experience both here and now and in eternity. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>